Okay, we're back. <laughs> that's the, that's the, uh, and we're back. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, and it's Comp 392. It's week one, lesson one, part two. And uh, where last we left off, uh, we talked about um, this playground with TypeScript, which is kind of a neat idea. Um, and we're going to use playgrounds a little bit to demonstrate a couple things with TypeScript here and there. But most of the time, we're going to be working within Visual Studio Code. Now, remember, Visual Studio Code is not Visual Studio. It's just a different editor altogether. So after we download Visual Studio Code, we need to configure it. So let's make a new project with Visual Studio Code and get it going, right? And uh, we'll build a couple things into it, but I want to direct you to a completed um, um, boilerplate that I have up here on GitHub, which I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes in a bit. If you go to github.com forward slash Centennial College, right, and if you look at 3JS boilerplate, this is, if you just download this thing, this will give you everything you need to run um, 3JS in an example. So I want to show you what the final product is going to be when we can use it, right? Um, and I've got it kind of over here, right? So one thing with Visual Studio Code, here's Visual Studio Code. One thing you can do with it, I'm just going to minimize this stuff so you can see more, more things, right? If I was to go into my code archive and, by the way, it works the same with Windows and Mac. Just all, even though I'm showing you Mac, it doesn't matter. If you take a, a window in Mac like this, if I go to Lesson 1 in my code archive and drag and drop my 3JS boilerplate over on the right-hand side, it'll just, you know, kind of focus in on the, on the project uh, folder that I'm looking at. Okay, so here, if you notice, there's 3JS boilerplate. And on the right-hand side is where we're going to have our editor, right? On the left-hand side is our file menu, right? And if I click on... Uh, notice my, my folder structure is very similar for people who have, for, who have seen it before. I have assets, and right now there's materials and textures, and they're empty. There's nothing in there. We're going to add assets later on. There's content, and under contact, I have an app.css file, and all it has is margins of zero and overflow hidden, so that way it takes up the, the, the whole page. That's what we have right now starting off, right? Under our scripts, this is where all the fun happens. I have some really good examples here of using TypeScript. Notice how we have a game.ts file. I've called it game because I'm going to use 3JS for, to create games, right? But you can also call it app.ts, and I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be upset about it. So here's my game.ts file. And notice how the ts file has um, all the JavaScript. So we're going to build this up, right, together next week. We're going, to, we're going to sit there and build it. But I'm showing you the boilerplate that we're starting off with so you can have an example of what it works like. Yeah, maybe we can do this next day. We'll see how it goes. So the good thing about Visual Studio Code as an editor is there's, there are three different panes here. One is this little icon bar on the left, right? Um, this part here, this area on the left over here, is kind of like the ability for us to see uh, the file folders. And then there's the editor over here. You can also do a split screen where if I want to see one file on this side and the other file on this side, I can do that by basically... Um, clicking the split screen button up here on the top and it actually gives me two views right so I can sit there and go well you know what I want to see on the left side I want to have my game.ts file and on the right side I want to have my game.js file as a difference so I focus on my game.ts file side or this is the right side and click game.js and you can see the difference now it looks like a bunch of gobbledygook and we're gonna go over that and I can kind of if I if I grab hold of this area here this border between my editor and my file, I can actually collapse this like this, right, by dragging and dropping. So I have two sides. I can see both sides of, the, of my editor. Um, on the left side is TypeScript. On the right side is JavaScript. And notice how there's a bit of a difference, right? On the left side, um, you can see how I'm using the import statement to import, um, you know, essence, you know, kind of elements of my scene, three, three scene. And so we're going to kind of describe what all these things do later on. And on the right side, I'm just using var statements to kind of initialize um, all of our variables. So I'm just going to give you a view of what it looks like, right? So what does it look like from a high level? I'm just going to pull this thing out again. So I'm going to click on this. If I click on my icons here, there's different, different reasons why they all exist in Visual Studio Code. On the left one, this one here, this is my file structure. This is my project structure over here. If I click this one, this is my GitHub. I can actually have a, it's a, there's a connection to GitHub right here, which we're going to kind of do. We're going to do a um, kind of a project from scratch as well. I can do debugging with this one, 
right? And we're going to do that later on and look at variables and so on and create um, kind of breakpoints. I can also search for different uh, different things inside my scene as well. These what this is all that these things are. Okay, cool. So if I want to run this thing, um, remember if you're downloading it from my repository up on GitHub, which is this repository right here, it won't run. You have to. Um, First of all, you have to have Node installed. So who has Node installed on their system? Well, there might be Node installed in front of you, right? Inside the system in front of you. But if you don't, you have to download and install Node. So I'm going to direct you to Node.js here, or Node.js.org, right? Now, there's two versions of Node if you're installing Node. And one of them is this mature and dependable 4.24, right? 4.2.4. Um, you can certainly use the 5.4.0, which is the one I'm using, and I have, I've seen no side effects so far, right? And if for our purposes, because we're kind of on the bleeding edge, it's okay. Use the 5.4.0 stable release, right? If you're on a Windows machine, you can certainly go to the nodejs.org uh, website and download Node and install it, and it will work fine. If you're on a Mac, I don't recommend it. I recommend you use Homebrew, right, to download and install Node. Because otherwise, you're going to have to do, use a bunch of sudo commands or sudo commands, right? Just like you would in Linux for super user, right? So I use Homebrew on the Mac. So whenever I do a, any kind of, of console command on the Mac, I, I don't have to, you know, uh, kind of precede it with a sudo, right? But if you're a Windows user, this is just fine. Just download and install it from here. All right, so once you've got this installed, that's one piece. The next piece is you have to kind of, in your folder, so if I was going to download this thing here and make it run, let's do it. So instead of running it for, from where I have it, this is my code right here, which is 3JS three, uh, three boilerplate. This is in my code archive that I'm teaching you guys with, right? I'm going to download another version of it to, to show you how it works, right? So let's go up on GitHub. So I'm going to go back up to GitHub. And I'm going to click the download zip. You can also clone in desktop. And if you're not someone who likes command line, it's okay, right? Uh, GitHub has saved you. You can go to desktop.github.com and download a UI that allows you to do to work with GitHub in a UI format, right? So desktop.github.com. It gives you a little application that allows you to use GitHub on the desktop, right? So you can certainly do that. And it also installs Git locally on your system if you don't have it installed. Right now, the system in front of you should all have that, theoretically. But it may not. So that's why I'm telling you where to get it, right? OK, but so you, if you have GitHub, or the, the Git command line tool is one thing. But you can also clone it in desktop, right, as an example. And if you notice over here, there's this little icon on the right that says clone it in desktop, right? If I have my desktop tool, which I do, it'll actually open it up in my desktop tool and clone it on my desktop. Okay, I'm just going to click the download zip uh, button here to, to try it on my own. So I'm going to kind of download zip. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And if you notice, it says 3JS boilerplate master because that's the master branch that I'm working with. And in GitHub, there's different branches. And if you were going to ask me, what is GitHub, Tom? I've never used GitHub before in my life, right? GitHub is a repository, um, well, is a cloud based. Um, revision control system that allows us to compare and work with our development environment, right? When we develop an application, and it tracks our changes, right? And also tracks, uh, you know, people who have added in, um, you know, any kind of changes to our system. That's what Git does, more or less, in a nutshell. So there's two. There's two versions: Git locally in your system, which has nothing to do with the web, Git command line, and GitHub. GitHub is your cloud provider with, with a, um, a repository online that you can connect to, right? So that's what GitHub is. So here in GitHub, on the cloud, which I've shared this file, this 3JS boilerplate file, I'm going to go there and grab it and save it on my desktop. So I'm going to click Desktop and Save. And it's going to pull it down. It's pretty small, right? And when I do, I'm going to go over. Here's my zip file. I'm going to double click on this. And now in the Mac, you can also right click and, and extract on the Windows, uh, Windows machines. I'm just going to delete this part now. And notice how I have up here, I have this 3JS boilerplate, which I can rename if I want. Just I was, instead of uh, it, it being called 3JS boilerplate master, I was going to kind of change it to 3JS boilerplate. OK, there it is. And now I want to use Visual Studio Code, just like I did before, to drag and drop this in, right, as an example. 
So here's my Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to take my 3JS boilerplate that I have and drag and drop it into one of these panes. When I do that, it loads my new 3JS boilerplate project inside Visual Studio Code, right? That's what it does. Now, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because I have to install the dependencies and I have to install any kind of uh, anything else that I don't have in here. What do I mean by dependencies? We're going to be using something called Bower, right, to grab our dependencies when we create stuff, right? Because imagine this, every time I download a JavaScript library, I got to go out to the, to, uh, to the web, grab that library, and, and kind of, you know, download it and install it into my, into my project folder. I don't want to do that. What if it changes, right? Or, and what if I only want one kind of version of that code, but not the latest version, right? Well, what Bower does is it allows me to download and install the version. So I've done this with Bower, and we're going to build this out. Don't, don't be afraid. We're going to build this out from scratch next day or the day after when we get together. So if just watch and just see how this thing works for now. I want you to understand the workflow here. It's not really about understanding everything, how to do it. All right, so in Visual Studio Code, I can right-click in this pane, right-click, and it gives me a little context menu that says new file, new folder, reveal in in your operating system, whatever it is, in, in on the Mac, it's in Finder. In Windows, in, I'm sure it's an Explorer, right? Or open in Terminal or Command Prompt in Windows, right? I want to open in, in Command Prompt or Terminal. And when I do that, notice how I have a little uh, Command Prompt or Terminal that pops up. Here it is, and it's showing me the exact location of where this is, 3JS boilerplate, right? So I don't have to swim to that location in my operating system. It's already right there. If I do an LS on the Mac or a DIR on Windows, right, notice how I have my folder structure. But I can't run it like this because I haven't installed my dependencies. My dependency manager, Bower, has a file, bower.json, that's inside my project structure, right? And if I take a look at that file, it tells you there's a bunch of different things it needs. It needs the 3JS library. It needs the dat.gui library, which we haven't talked about yet, my stats library, and the 3x colliders library that we're going to use for games, right? So those are the four different libraries I've included. But guess what? They're not here. And they're supposed to be inside scripts lib. So if I look at scripts, there is no lib folder, right? And the way I get that, of course, is by doing one of these. Bower install. Now, if you don't have Bower installed, it's not going to work. To install Bower in your system, you have to do one of these. npm install minus g Bower. And what npm is for Node is the Node Package Manager. What it does is it installs a module, a component to a node, and it enables Bower, Bower being the front end um, dependency manager, right, inside your global namespace for your, for your computer, right? So you can always use Bower later on. By the way, on the PowerPoint presentation, for those people who are worried, and you're not going to remember it all, don't worry, because when I upload the, Bower, the PowerPoint presentation, it tells you you need GitHub, right? It tells you you need Node.js. It tells you you need Bower, and here's how you install Bower, npm install minus g Bower, right? So don't worry, it's all going to be there in nice, concise format, right? So you can use this yes, if npm is installed properly in Windows, if Node.js is installed properly on your system. Did you install Node.js? Yeah. If you install Node.js and everything works fine, then this should work. If you didn't install Node.js properly, and you may have to reboot your machine because your environment variables may not be set properly. All right. all right, so cool. So we've got this npm install minus g bower. We've done this, and it all works. Um, and once we've, we've, we've executed this command, I can simply go something like this. I can go bower, bower install. And when I do a bower install, it, it pulls down the dependencies from the web, right, and puts them in their proper places, which is inside my scripts lib folder, right? Now that I have that, um, I also have to install um, my, t my type definition libraries, right? Because there's another piece to it. I talked about Bower, and we talked about the 3JS boilerplate, but you can't use it unless you download um, TypeScript, as an example. And the way we do TypeScript is we have to do an npm install minus g TypeScript on the command line. So do that now. Oops. TypeScript, there's two ways to get TypeScript. If you're using Visual Studio proper, Visual Studio, you can use uh, NuGet to get uh, TypeScript, right? Or you can download and install Visual Studio Web Essentials, 
right, for Visual Studio, VS Web Essentials for Visual Studio. And what VS Web Essentials does is it installs TypeScript and support for web. So if you're using Visual Studio proper, Visual Studio 2013, 2015, that's the way you get TypeScript. Or you can get it through here. Visual Studio 2013, 2015 has to be at least 2013, update 5. 2015 will support it uh, out of the box. Okay, so you've got TypeScript. We did this npm install minus g TypeScript. And now I want to use my TypeScript uh, package manager. And again, remember I told you there's a bit of setup. Once we set this up the first time, we're good to go, right? I got to install my TypeScript manager here, this TSD. And the way I do that is npm install TSD minus g, right? Once I've done that, so that's npm install TSD minus g. Once I've done that, I can do a TSD install, TSD install, which is going to look at my TSD.json um, file, right? And it's going to install my, my dependencies for TypeScript. So it's going to install dat GUI, stats, and 3JS, the type definition libraries for those, to give me code hinting for uh, TypeScript. I can't get code hinting for external libraries without a type definition file. So there's two parts of TypeScript. The really cool class and everything else I can make my own custom libraries. And then for external files like 3JS, external libraries, I need a type defini a definition file, almost like a library descriptor file that describes what the, what the class does, right? And there's a, a vibrant community out there uh, called Definitely Typed. It's supported by the community. But instead of me going to Definitely Typed, I can use TSD, which is built into the command line to grab all the type definition files I need. Don't worry if you don't understand right now. It's just high level, right? And I don't want to scare you guys off, but we need these things in order for us to get good typing for our file. All right, so I've got everything I needed. Again, remember, you can always watch this thing on the video too, right, once you see me doing this. I've got everything I needed now. Um, I want to run this thing, and unfortunately for uh, libraries like 3.js, CreateJS, and others, sometimes what we get is cross-scripting errors, right? Because especially in Google, uh, sorry, Chrome. Chrome is tight in terms of security. Same thing with Firefox, right? So if you want to try and double-click sometimes, it won't allow you to, right? And you have to run a little server in the background. And the way to do that, of course, is to download and install a little server. <laughs> so again, if I was going to, when I put up the PowerPoint presentation, you're going to see I need this little web server to grab. And I can do this by getting by using my npm install minus g HTTP server, which is a small little server that runs in the background. It's a local server we can use for testing. Remember that 3JS is meant to run on a server. It's not meant to run, meant to be run locally, typically. Right, so if you go and npm install minus g HTTP server, you can use it. And again, once I'm done, I'm going to type HTTP server to launch it, and it'll run on port 8080, as opposed to port 80, like it normally runs. Why am I showing you npm? Could I have done this a different way? I know people are like, Tom, Node is kind of advanced. It's kind of crazy. Why are we using Node? Because Node is the way to go, guys. Right? You need to have ancillary technology. When we learn a new piece of, of uh, technology, there's a lot of ancillary technologies that go along with it. Some tools we need, like GitHub, Node, TypeScript, TSD, uh, Grunt, Gulp, Browserify. I can keep going, right? It's crazy. There's the amount of tools that are out there these days uh, for things like compression, um, automatic installation, automatic restart, and a lot of other tools to improve our workflow in JavaScript, right? But once you guys get this, employability-wise, you put on that you know TypeScript, you know Node, because you will know Node by the end of this course, right? You won't know it as well as you would if you took if you took a mean stack course like Comp 308, right, which is actually running right now. Um, but you know it to the point where you can actually make a little server, and we're going to deploy all of our assignments live on the web using either Azure or Heroku. All right, so that's the other component we haven't touched, the cloud, right? So, lots of stuff. Okay, so you've done this. Now let's see what it looks like. Well, if I run on my, on my um, terminal, if I go HTTP server, and if I've installed it properly, it's going to do this. Right? What was that? Then npm, have you installed it through npm? Does it install, does it understand npm? You have to do it, uh, uh, Bower install. Right? Oh, sorry, Bower, yeah, Bower install. 
right? Because Bower space install, what it'll do is it'll install all the dependencies inside your project files. Don't worry, I'm going to go around before we stop and, and check everybody. Because I'm going to do this in a second, and we're going to stop. And then I'm going to go around and check to make sure everyone knows what I'm doing. Because otherwise you can't use your boilerplate, and that's that, right? Okay, let's take a look. So I've got my worst, best case scenario. You've got your little server running. I want to test it. I'm going to go to the web, and I'm going to choose kind of a blank tab here. I'm going to go localhost, and instead of 3000, I'm going to choose 8080. And it should do this. This is what you get with my little boilerplate, right? So this is all done by code. Now, if you notice, on the right, you have this control tool that we're going to kind of talk about. This is called dat GUI. This is a kind of a little library that runs, made by the same guy who made 3JS, right? And what we can do is we can increase or decrease the rotation speed or reverse it with this little tool, right? Same thing with my opacity. I can increase my opacity until it's completely opaque, or I can go until it's completely transparent, right? Or more or less transparent. And I can change my color. If I don't like my green cube, I can make it red right? By changing my color and increasing my opacity. All right, so there's a couple things that are going on here, but this is your boilerplate. I've given you the code you need to make to, to start with 3JS. All right, we're going to build it from scratch together, and there's going to be some work involved, as you see, right? It's not just so easy to build this thing, this, uh, this, this application from scratch, but this is the kind of stuff we want to get to. We want to get to be able to, to, in order for you guys to get here, you need to understand all these piece parts, right? And you need to set up your environment, and that's what we're doing today, right? Okay, not done. So we've got this little this little tool here, right? How do you launch it? It wouldn't run right now. I'll tell you right now, it wouldn't run normally if you were to start it off, right? Well, the great thing is it's already been compiled for you, so there is both sides right now. In my little boilerplate, there's a compiled version of JavaScript, and there's the uncompiled version of TypeScript that, that are there. So that's why it's running. But if you're going to do this from scratch, you have to compile your, your, your TypeScript. So let's do one more test with a new, a new project to get you, your feet wet with TypeScript and compiling and all that stuff, right? Um, and we'll do that really quickly, and then I'll go around and check everybody. Okay, and then we'll meet next day and we'll go to the next piece. And finally, I put my, my, my project files up there so you'll like, know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of minimize this. Let's kick off a new project really quickly. And so we can start off from scratch. So I'm going to just kill type, uh, a Visual Studio Code for a second. And I want to, it's somewhere on my desktop or somewhere where you feel like doing it. Um, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And I'm going to call this kind of my example folder. So let's just call it example. Right? So, you know, you can't uh, not know what this is. Right? This is your example folder, your folder you're creating. Right? Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code now. Right, so again, here's my Visual Studio Code. I'm bringing it up. It's going to bring up my last project, but I don't care because as soon as I drag and drop my example.com, my example program project here into this pane, it's gone. It just shows this example, right? And that's what you should have. You should have just like this empty container with nothing in it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I want to I want to show you the complexity involved around installing TypeScript for the first time. Once you've done this once. It's not difficult to do again. It just takes understanding, right? Okay. Well, I need a couple things. Let's create underneath here. If you notice, if I hover over my project, I have a couple of buttons here. One of them is a new file. The other one is a new folder. Let's create a new folder, and we're going to call this scripts. All right? Under my scripts, I'm going to hover over my scripts, and I'm going to create a new file. We're going to call this app.ts, right? TypeScript file, right? Notice on the bottom here, on the bottom right-hand corner of your editor, right, it shows TypeScript as the type of file. It identifies with the, with the extension that it's a TypeScript file right here on the bottom right-hand corner, right? So that's, I mean, it understands that it's TypeScript file, number one. Okay, that's cool, cool. Well, we haven't done anything yet. I want to also, we need an index.html to bind it all together, right? So in my, on my project, without, I want to click away from my, my, uh, my folder and on my project I'm going to click a new file that I'm going to call index.html. Okay, cool. Well, I want to create my file really quickly. So there's a couple ways to do this, um, but I'm going to go into the web to grab a quick file from, from Bootstrap, right? So let's go to getbootstrap.com. And if you notice, under getting started on getbootstrap.com, if you scroll all the way down, or closer, closer to the bottom, 
there's going to be a section that has a basic template, and I want you to grab this basic template here, copy it, and paste it into our index.html. And I want you to get rid of all this other stuff, like all this other crap here. So let's get rid of all this, up to the title, and we'll give all the risk. But I want the meta tags to be in here, all right? Like this, okay? I don't care about these script tags right here, so I'm gonna get rid of those. And my hello world, get rid of those too. Good. So that's all we have for a doctor. You can also type this by your hand. Get boots. This is on getbootstrap.com under getting started. If you go to the bottom where it says basic template, grab that and just paste it into your your uh, uh, your VS Code. Or you can also just type a basic template here, uh, an HTML template that's like this. I just want to save some time instead of typing by hand. It's like a code snippet. Okay, cool. So I've got my little code snippet here. And instead of my basic 101 template, we'll just call this thing TypeScript Demo. And here it is. And what I want to do in my body, remember that JavaScript should always live, when I refer to my JavaScript file, so it's non-blocking, it should always be referenced at the bottom just before my the end body tag. Okay, so... There's this body element has two tags, my opening tag, the body, and my closing tag, right? So my JavaScript reference should be right here, right? Now notice how my script lives in my scripts folder, and it's called app.ts. So when I create my script, let's just type this together, script. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click tab. I'm gonna say source equals to, and it's gonna be scripts, capital S, and then app, instead of .ts, it's going to be app.js because I'm going to transpile it. That's all I need. Cool. All right, so this is my, my index.html. I've got my app.ts here. And my app.ts is pretty empty, right? And i got to refer to it somewhere in my, in my HTML document. And so in my body tag, I'm going to put a new attribute called onload, right? So when my page loads, I want to access a function that doesn't exist called init. That's what I'm doing here. Right? Now, it doesn't exist yet in my app.ts file, but it will. Right? So I'm going to go back to my app.ts file. Let me know when you're ready. And in here, I'm going to create a new function. Right? I'm going to say function. And we're going to call this init. And we're going to just do one of those. Right? Well, this looks like JavaScript. Well, yeah, it is. And we're just going to say a console.log, and we're going to say, you know, app started. Right? Okay, cool. We've saved it. We're good, but we have a problem. One, we haven't transpiled it from TypeScript. It's still TypeScript. We need to make it into JavaScript. And there's a couple of things you need to catch here within these next minutes to do that. All right? So here's how we're going to do it. One, we're missing a file, a, a, a required file in my project structure. Right, which is a tsconfig.json file. So we're going to go into my main root of my folder, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to add a new file, and it's going to be called ts exactly like this config.json. If I don't have this file, it will never work as, as TypeScript, right? Okay, cool. When I'm in here and I've created my tsconfig.json file, I want it I want it on the Mac or the Windows machine. Control space allows me, it says no, no suggestions, but if I, if I actually click in here and I, I open up a, um, some brackets and press control space, it gives me a couple things. It gives me something called compiler options, which is what I want. So here's my compiler options. Right, and the thing to do is, if, if you think about this, this is the way I can compile my, my uh, TypeScript to JavaScript kind of thing, right? I need a, a file somehow to tell me my compiler options. If I don't know what my compiler options are, I can't transpile, right? So that's the first thing. So again, one of the things I need is, is my module, all right? So if I could click on module, it's CommonJS, right? And I also need to know um, my how I'm going to transpile, right? Now, you know, I'm a little bit brain dead th this morning, so or this afternoon, so I can't for the life of me remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, I have my, an example of my tsconfig.json file, which I can look at, thank God, right? And I'm going to look at it with brackets for a second, right? So what I'm missing is target. Yes, target, target. 
So you need to target. So if I say target, I'm going to choose ES5. Why ES5 and not ES6? ES6, members ECMAScript 6, the latest version, Harmony, whatever. Not everything supports ES6. So I want to convert back to ES5. And I want to use this common JS module, not AMD, because this is going to put my JavaScript in the right format so it's, a, it's un understandable by all browsers. Right? I need one more thing here. I'm going to put a comma and put map. And I want to have a source map. Right? And I want to make this true. What this does is it creates an additional file as well as your JavaScript file. It adds something called a source map, a map file. So that way in the browser, Chrome will identify where in TypeScript your error is. Okay, you need that extra file, right? So that's what my compiler options should look like. Okay. I can't believe I forgot target. Dark. Okay, so that's cool. I've got my tsconfig file. I need to transpile this, and there's a shortcut key for me to do that. First, I'm going to save my index.html. Um, I to transpile my document, notice how I'm, I'm opening my scripts folder, and inside there's only my app.ts file. I need an app.js file. And more for me to get that, I'm going to, I'm going to click Shift on the Mac, Command B, or on the Windows, it's Shift, if I'm not wrong, Alt B. On the, on, when I do Shift Command B on the Mac, it goes Configure Task Runner, right? Now it's one of the two. It's either Shift Command or Shift Control. Shift Control B. There you go. Now when you see this configured task runner, right, this is what you want to see. Shift control B on the Windows machines, right? If I click configure task runner, it gives me this all this gobbledygook. Let's get rid of it. So I'm gonna get rid of all this, and I'm gonna get rid of all that. And all I want to be left with is this piece right here, right? And let's get rid of this, this tab here. This is good, right? This is all I need. I'm just gonna get rid of all, all my comments here so you can see what it looks like. I don't really have to do anything. Once I configure my task runner. What a task runner does is it, it goes onto the command line as long as you've got TSC installed, which is TypeScript, which we've already done, npm install TypeScript, you should be able to transpile into JavaScript. Now, one thing you need to get rid of is we don't have a hello world.ts file. We want to get rid of anything that's inside of here by just killing this. Okay, so we want our arguments to be none. Okay, so once I've done this task.json file and I've configured it like this, I'll wait for it to be done. That's all you should need. And if you press Control Shift B again, it will, it should transpile into JavaScript. Let me show you what it looks like on Command Shift B. So Command Shift B on the Mac, it runs really quickly. And if I've done everything properly, if I've saved everything, by the way, let me just make sure it's done done correctly. Shift Command Shift B. Now, how come it's not working, you might say? Well, because see these little brackets? Sometimes these args, uh, everything else in here should be different. So again, I have, thank God I have a boilerplate, right, to check, right? Because I can't remember. So um, I'm going to go into VS Code, which is my type definition library for my other stuff, right? Actually, up online is where you should really look at it, right? Because if you look up online onto, on a GitHub really quickly, and if I go to Centennial College, I have a great example about there, right? Because I've got my... 3JS boilerplate code, and here under VS Code, I have my task.json, and if you notice here, oh, there is nothing inside the arcs, so not even quotations. That's the problem. All right, so if I go back to here, and if I take get rid of my quotations, that's the problem, and now if I press Command Shift B, it should tr transpile, and I get three files: my JavaScript file, my TypeScript file, and my JavaScript map file. Control Shift B, Command Shift B on the Mac. All right. Now, the only way it's going to work is, the only way it's going to work is if you have TS, TypeScript installed with NPM in, uh, with Node on the, on the command line. It's got to be installed. It's got to have the latest version. If it doesn't have the latest version of TypeScript in the command line on your Windows machine, it will fail. And this is where you and I have to spend next week or next day going around making sure that your system works fine for the transpile. When it transpiles, it just does this. It's just the exact same thing. If you want to check it out, just Grab and if it doesn't transpile for you, just grab this app.js file, make your own, right? And do this for now. It'd be nice if it transpiles. You can also do it on the command line. If it if you want to transpile on the command line, you right click here inside this view and you go reveal or sorry open in command prompt or in terminal on the Mac. And when I do that, if I actually pull it up here. Let's try that again. 
<coughs> there it is. Um, here's my example. I can do one like something like this: TSC space app.ts and press enter. And if everything goes well, um, oh, app.ts not found. How about that? Because it exists in my um, in my uh, scripts file. Here it is, right here. So I'm going to say TSC app.ts, and if I do that, it'll transpile it right over into JavaScript. So you can do it both ways. You can do it manually on the command line, or the nicer way was, would be with the task runner, right? So you just shift command, control shift B, and then it transpiles. So if it doesn't work for you, don't worry, because I want to take care of that problem next day with you, so we can get that going. Because if you can't transpile, then TypeScript will be useless for you, which would be bad, right? Okay, cool. So we've done a couple things. Let's run this thing to make sure it works. If you've got what I've got, or if you transpiled manually, or if you created something, then whenever I run my index.html file, and if I want to right-click and reveal in Finder or on, on Explorer on Windows, then um, I should see this example. And if I double-click on index.html, I'll get nothing. But if I right-click and click on Inspect and go to Console, then I should get App Started. If you don't have apps started, that means we have work to do next day, right? And that's okay because, like I said, not everyone's really cool with JavaScript, right? Um, and also, it's setting up your environment. Once we set up our environment and all works for you, you'll be happy, right? Until then, we'll be all sad, right? So have patience with me, and next day when we get together, um, we'll get this all running. Questions? Lots of stuff today, right? And this is like day one. Right? So, but we need to do this because this is all new to some of you, or most of you, and um, you're setting up a workflow for yourself to make sure your environment's running. We've covered that, a couple things, we've covered some stuff around um, Blender and 3D. We've talked about some, some of that, those concepts, and we've also talked about some stuff about 3JS and how to set up your environment to transpile from JavaScript to TypeScript, and a lot of other things, right? But remember, if you can't remember it all, you can always go on the video and watch it on YouTube on my channel, okay? And we'll see you next week or next day, which would be on Wednesday, yeah? And I think it's 4.30 to 6.30 if I'm not wrong, no? Or is it? Or 2.30 to 4.30. It might be 2.30 to 4.30. I can't remember which day it is off the top of my head. Let me see. Before, we, before I let you guys go so I record it <laughs> so you guys know where it is because that would be really bad, right? Hey, get, let's get together at 4.30, and it's not 4.30, it's some other day. Um, it's actually uh, between uh, 2.30 and 4.30 on Wednesday. Okay, guys, thanks so much, and I'll see you then. For those people who want to stick around before the other professor comes in, I'll go around and correct your problem, all right? Hey, uh, do you by chance have any other lab times besides Wednesday that we can attend, or do we have to go to the one with the four-hour section? Uh, just a second. Let me, let me cancel this thing first before I answer your question. All right. Because you're being reported.